Hey, what's up? Welcome to part two of my plasma compression video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate plasma compression using different coils, different arrangement of those coils, and I'm going to use the same capacitor bank and the same voltage of that capacitor bank as my previous video. I'm going to try to see if uh, which one would make the best plasma compression image. And as you can see, I can only get one frame out of everything I do, so I try to do the best one I could do. So I'm going to just start off with the, this coil has 20 more turns than my previous coil and it's going to increase the resistance so it might not have as much current and much magnetic field as the previous one but I'm going to see what's going to happen. I'm using the same capacitor bank and as you can see not much happens, not much, nothing compared to the original video. So I want to see what happened if you increase the current of the plasma. And so I just charge up the capacitor bank and I put the leads on both ends and I just pull the vacuum and let the thing just self-discharge once it gets to a certain vacuum level. And what ended up happening was it just became a flash lamp. Like I wasn't able to see anything. Um, there was one image where I was able to see just like a nice little sliver of plasma, but that's pretty much it. Everything else was just a bright explosion and I put the ND filter on, I increased the, um, I decreased the ISO settings and I still got a bright flash where I couldn't see anything. So I abandoned the idea and I just did two coils. So I decided to add a second coil and I wanted to see if the image inside the two coils would be better but I decided to use one, reuse one of the coils and well, it kind of had a, a short, and so I kind of just kept going with it, and each time it just made a bigger and bigger explosion, and so I decided to use hot glue to try to fix that, and it didn't work, it just channeled the explosion, and so I just kept doing that to the point where I decided to finally scrap that idea and rewind a second coil of a brand new wire and that actually fixed that so i was able to do the compression without any explosions and i was able to see what was going on and with the higher resistance i didn't really get to see much because it only compressed a little bit it wasn't as good as the previous one and these are the best images i could get out of that and it was nowhere near the uh, previous image I decided to switch the windings around. Instead of the windings being parallel, I switched them to be anti-parallel, so they're gonna be fighting against each other in terms of the magnetic field to see what would happen. And yeah, I as soon as I saw that, I was stoked. I really had to try this out with the higher capacitor bank. But of course, I wanted to see with the images, with the um, regular capacitor bank, with the um, coils in the parallel direction. And so I did that and of course the coils just collapsed, slammed into each other and the Z-pinch effect, you really can't see much and it wasn't anything significant. But it was cool to see this in slow motion. And that was with the single coil and uh, wasn't as nice. And after effects, like when the coil smashed together, it completely obliterated all of my zip ties that was in between it. And none of the zip ties inside kind of survived. And I had to take out the zip ties, restretch the coil, make the coil all over again. And I was only able to get one zip tie in each coil, enough to do one more test. And this one is gonna be anti-parallel, so they're gonna be opposing and many fields on both sides. And I wanted to see what would happen with a higher energy level. And of course, the coils 
split apart, but the most interesting part is when it's in slow motion. And just going frame by frame, you can see a nice little effect of a bunched up plasma in the middle. Looks pretty awesome. Thanks for watching.